develop secure code on iOS. I'm, I'm kidding. Um, most of people know me as Ezadas. I'm working at S21 Sec, and you can follow me on social media, as Twitter, or my own blog. Um, quick question. How many of you know how to code Java? Okay. How many of you have tried to reverse uh, Java ex executable? Okay. And how many knows how to develop Android? And have you tried to do reverse Android? Okay, okay. I see some people that tried it. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk a, a little bit about how to reverse the Android app. Um, what funny stuff you can do with it, what you can find inside the um, app. And um, we'll start with some technical parts. Uh, I will show you how the um, Android operating system works and how the, the app is compiled. And then I will show you some real examples of uh, what I usually found when I'm pen testing a, an Android app. Um, you, can, you can follow this recipe. Uh, it's like cooking. It's something that you do and repeat if it is, it is not working. And this is the um, decision steps that you, have, you must take to, to reverse an app. You first start to, to get the APK, it's the, the execut execut executable. Um, then you, you analyze the, the code and see what, what's inside the, the app. Then you do, do some modifications on the app. Then you, you rebuild it, you install it on your device and check if, the, if it's working. If not, just repeat the process until it, it works. Uh, I will start with reverse you can write and show you, show you how it's done. Um, if some of you are, are not familiarized with the reversing, it's basically, you start with the bacon, that's your app, your right app, then you do some magic inside it, and that's called the reversing, and at the end you get the pig or the, the source code uh, used to, to create that, that app. What is a, an APK? The, the APK is a file that you use to, to install the, the app on your Android device. Um, inside the, this APK, it's all the files needed to, to the app run on your Android device. Uh, it's where all the, the images um, are stored, where the, the songs and um, music are, are stored. Uh, where your user interface is described and of course it's where the, the code that is going to execute is also kept. Um, but basically what's um, an APK? It, it is really simple, it's just a zip file, you can open it on some uh, software and see what's inside it. And inside this file there are three important files inside it. This, there is the Android manifest. This is the, the file where you describe uh, um, what will be that app. Uh, it's what the, the Android operating system will look, look at first. It's there where you, um, you, you define the, the name that the app will have, the, the icon, all the, the permissions that will be needed to, to run this app, like if it needs internet, if it needs GPS, Bluetooth, NFC, whatever it needs to, to run. And it's where it, it's done, uh, a lot of information like uh, the activities that are exported or not, the intents and so on. You have also the classes context. This is a bundle with all the code that will, will run on the um, Android. And there, uh, there is the resources, that is a, a bundle file with all the, um, the random data of the, the random files that are inside it, like the, the image sounds and the, the user interface and all of that that is not called neither the description of the, the app. Um, the, the process of the, the compilation of an Android app is really simple. You start with, with the Java. Everyone knows the, the Java language. And when you compile it, the, the Java code, you get a, a dot class. This is a, a binary file uh, that will be interpreted in the, your um, Java virtual machine on your desktop. Uh, but 
on Android, you, you don't have um, a virtual machine like you have on, a, on your desktop. It's a little bit different, but the concept is the, the same. You just need to do some optimizations. Since the, the Android system is not a, a desktop, you need to, um, to optimize some of the instructions that are inside the class and create that dot text. The dot text is just the optimization of the, the dot class. Um, and since you have the, the dot text, you just need to, to join the resources and the Android manifest and zip it to, to create the APK that it will be, will be the, the file that you're going to install uh, on your device. Um, if you want to have a higher look of the, the process, you just start with um, the Java source code, then you compile it, or the Android Studio will compile it, because you will not see this, um, these operations going, which is, you know that they happen, and you get the dot class. Then you will, um, the Android Studio will optimize that, that dot class and create this dot text. This is the, the real file that will execute on your Android operating system. Um, and th this is pretty um, straightforward when you're compiling a, a, an app, but here we want to do more than just compiling. We, you want to reverse it and uh, s doing the reverse of, uh, or, or else. Be so you will start with a .dex and you want to get the .java. So you, you're going like reversing. So, if you start with the dot text, you can get the dot smiley. This is the um, more or ever the, um, the assembly that you usually find on native apps. It's a, a low-level language code um, that you can use on uh, Android apps. Um, if you go upward, you can get the dot plus um, bytecode. It's still a binary file. It's not code that you can read, like the sm dot smiley, but uh, it's really important because at this point you can use software like generic software, uh, Java compilers to, to compile the app and y you can um, be abstract of the Android uh, system and just decompile it like it was a, a regular uh, Java, um, uh, Java executable. So you, you have the bytecode but then you want to get the, the Java source code so you use a compiler you, you get the .java, but you will, it will not be the, the exact um, source that was used since you, you, you run it through a compiler, so some of the, um, the code uh, was optimized and then when you reverse it, you may not get the exact um, code that uh, was used, but it's enough to understand the, um, the app flow. So, um, everyone knows Java, and you hear me talking about bytecode and Dalvik and Java, uh, and it's getting confusing. So, you know Java, there is a, an import, you have the, the class, you have a, a method, and then you have um, a function, a method that um, we'll call hello world. This is the simple hello world that everyone sees on most of the, the Java tutorials. Um, and you know how to read this, this is just Java, it's pretty straightforward. Um, when you compile it to, to a dot class, you can see the, the bytecode, it's like the assembly for Java, it's low level language for Java, and you, you can read it, but it's not that readable as the, the original source, but you know that there is a get static and you get the system out, like this is the system out, and you get the print stream, that's the print stream that was included, and then you load the, the string to memory, and then you revoke virtual basically invoking from the print stream the println function and it will have a string as argument that's this string and you print the, the string on your um, terminal um, but on Android you get this but then you optimize it to, to smally uh, since, since the, the topic machine what will run on Android is a little bit different but it's also readable as you can see um, there is the class, hello world, there is, there is the, the static main, the, the method, but there is some difference, then you, here you get the object system, like there is here system, out, out, print stream, like the import, constraint, const string, you're, you're storing the, this, is, this string on memory, and then you invoke 
Virgo with this, these two arguments, the V0 is this object, the V1 is this string, and then we go from print stream, print LDN. I think it's readable and uh, it's not Java, but you can read it and you can understand it. So it's not difficult. The Java byte code and Dalby byte code, you cannot read it like that. You cannot open a file and read the code. There, there will be just bytes and there is no visual correspondence between that bytes and the instructions that um, you can read here. So, we know how to compile it and how to reverse it. So, now you, you want to, to catch, uh, you want to, to modify the app flow to do something that was not happening before. So, you want to catch your Android and you're going to repeat the, the process again and you start with the APK, that's the original file that you got and then you get the small code, the low level instruction used on Android and then you patch it, you do some modification um, to change the, the flow that the that app uh, had uh, and you patch it and then you recompile it again to have the same format that before but with some modifications um, but on Android it's not that simple, you cannot just zip that file and run it on your device. There are some security measures and you, you, you will have to, to sign that app or else Android will look at that, that, that file and mm, I don't like that file, I don't know who has developed it, I don't know if, uh, if it's a trusted um, dev or not, so you need to, to create a, a signing key and uh, sign this APK with that key. Um, most of you have seen a, an option on Android, on settings, that uh, you have to check to, to install third-party apps. That's the, the an option, allow and trusted sources. Uh, that's because all the apps that are not signed by a user that is trusted by the Play Store, the Android will not install it. Um, uh, as default, so you have to, to check that option to install third-party th third apps and that's what's happening. You need to have a, a signing key. If you create your own signing key, uh, it will not install uh, without enabling the, that option. And since you sign it, you have a, an APK and, and that's able to, to install on, a, on your device. Since you, you have a um, high view of the Android process, compiling, reversing and patching. You can look at all the operative system and here at, at blue you get the, the Java apps. Um, the concepts that uh, I showed you on the previous slides, uh, they can be applied on the applications level. All these applications are like your launcher, the, the home screen that you see on your Android device, the, the contact app, it's also um, a generic app, uh, messaging app, uh, phone app, browser, and all the games and apps that you, that you can download on Play Store. You can apply all these concepts that I, I showed you. If you go lower, you get application framework. Um, it's a little bit lower level, but it's still Java. You can apply some of the concepts, not all of them, but uh, you, you can apply them and reverse it. But at least um, at this level, you have to, to be a little more experienced user since if you um, do something wrong, it, 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 will, uh, it, it, it will may break your device and if you don't know how to recover it, it will be like a um, pain in the ass. If you go lower, you cannot apply the concepts that I showed you because at this level, we are talking about the, the native level that are application that run on your CPU, like the native instructions, and you have to, to do other methods to, to reverse them. But at the same level, you have the Android runtime. The Android runtime is where the Dalby is, and it's your virtual machine, your Java virtual machine, but optimized for Android, and it will run on the same point. So um, if you want to, to reverse it, you can also apply some modifications but not with what I have showed before. It's, it's also funny, and if you want to go deeper on Android, um, you can study all, all these three layers, and, and it's pretty funny to, to play with it. But if you go lower uh, to this level, you, you are on an insane level, 
and it's not for, for everyone and uh, you have to, to get a deeper knowledge of all of this and uh, um, it's not that, that easy to, to play with it. Um, to start ECK apps, uh, you will need some um, tools on your, um, on your, on your laptop. Uh, the first one is Android Studio, of course, because it's the, the EDA to, to develop, develop apps and um, it will bring some other tools like the emulator. Uh, perhaps if you don't want to, to test it on your device because you don't trust the, the app or, or you, you don't want to break your device, you can use a, an emulator and um, it's pretty simple to, to run it on Android Studio and um, it, it can uh, speed up some of the, the tests but also it will come with the platform tools um, the tool that you need here is the ADB, Android Debug Bridge it's a tool that will connect your PC, PC through USB to your device and then you, you can run commands from your PC and run it on your device here you have APK tool. This is um, the first tool that you're going, you're going to, to use when, when testing an app. This will uh, unpack the app, but it, it will also repack the, the app. So it's, pre it's pretty useful. And then you have the next to jar. This is the, 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 the tool that will strip all the unwanted um, files from the APK, like the images and all that stuff. And it, it will keep just the code and uh, transform it in a, a dot .jar, as uh, most of you know, uh, it, it's um, a Java ex executable, and you can get um, the dot .jar from this and just run it on um, some Java compiler. Here, bytecode and chatsheesh are both compilers, but bytecode uh, has a, a funny feature that you can have more than one decompiler on that same view, and that's useful because some decompilers uh, may not decompile a function, but others can. So if you want, if one fails, you can try the, the other two or, or more because there's more than one uh, than um, I think five decompilers in my code viewer. So you can try uh, all of them and check if um, they can decompile that extra, that method that was not decompiled on the first decompiler. And of course, burp. I don't know if you know burp, but it's um, a proxy that you can run on your um, computer, and it, it will intercept the traffic going between your Android device and uh, the network, like your router. You can uh, see the packets that are, are going um, in and out, and you can also modify them. So I will show you some real examples that I, I found doing. Uh, during three, these years, and the first one is the INA app. Um, the INA it's the, the national um, conference for IT students, and uh, at the time they had a, a, an app that um, you, you could. Okay, I will show you after. But starting starting from here, INA app you, you can get it from the, the Play Store or some other alternative market, or you can uh, pull it directly from your device if it's already installed on your device. Um, for example, uh, this is the process that I, I, I like to do. It's going on Play Store and search for the app. And you can see on where all, this is the, the full name of the app. And then I paste it on Google and search it. And it will appear on some uh, alternative market. I click on download APK and I get the file. It's pretty simple. This is the app. Uh, it has the website, the schedule, and two games, and the button to, to scan QR codes. Uh, this game, Jogine, was um, a game inside the, the conference uh, where the, some places and some sponsors had the QR code and you had to scan it uh, to get all these images. At, at the end, the first one to get all the images uh, won a, a, a prize. So, as a curious person as I am, uh, I wanted to run this without scanning the gears, neither get out of my seat. So I started to, to look at the app, and um, there are 15 tokens, tokens to unlock these images. Uh, they are grayed out because I have not scanned them yet. Uh, we know that uh, we'll need the, the camera to scan the, scan the QR codes. 
Um, and the, the, the QR codes are hidden in the, the building and on the, the sponsors. So we know already how to obtain the, the, the APK, the app, you just go on the Play Store, search for the name and download, it's pretty easy. So we went to decompile the, the app. I use APK2, as I showed you before. It's pretty simple, just APK2, D from decompile and the, the app, and it, it will extract all the information that, that you need. Uh, I will look at Android Manifest, that's the file where, where all the, the details about the app is described. And you can see here, uh, there are two permissions, internet and camera, of course. Uh, it's allowed backup. This is the icon that will show on the launcher. This is the, the name that will appear. This, is, this one is um, stored on resources, so it's not uh, show as plain text here. Uh, there is another icon, blah, 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 uh, whatever. But you can see here intent filters. There are a, a lot of intent filters. This is the um, AP, APC, Interprocess Communication. Um, if you don't know what, what is, uh, basically, it's a mechanism to, to talk with all, other process. For example, if you are inside a, a game and there is a, a link and you click it and then suddenly the Chrome appears with a new tab with that link. Uh, what happened? The, the game app just called the, the Chrome and, and said, I want you to open this link on a new tab and then Chrome received it and uh, um, it looks at, at the message and looks and sees okay, I do this, I can do this, so I will open a, a new tab um, on this device. This is pretty simple, it's just talking between process and, and send a message that will be uh, interpreted uh, by the, the other app. Um, so a lot of stuff is going uh, on, on this and there is also another activities that are uh, declared here. Uh, so, I, I want to look at the code, and I strip out the code using the to jar to have the jar, and then I use jar.sheer, that's the, the Java compiler, compiler, the generic one, and um, I use this compiler to open the, the .jar created before. Uh, as I know how to code a little bit about Android, I know that the, the method used to, have, to, to get the um, the intent uh, message is the get intent. So I search through all the code, this text, and I found there are three classes that use this uh, this method. You can see here app home activity, and here there is an intent launcher with the activity app home activity. This is the first uh, activity that you run when you you open. You open the, the app like when you open the launcher and you click it, it will send the intent, this intent to that app, and the app, that app knows that that intent was for, for it, so it will appear on your device. So I know this is the first uh, activity running, so I want to look at it, and I, I followed it, and there it is. That is thing, get intent, that's a, that is thing. If it, it was not null, check in a URL. So I will follow it, and that's the method. And you can see it's a little bit confusing if you're not used to this type of, of Java, but uh, it will substring and get the, um, the this, um, like splitting the, the string and get just the, the last part. And for location, location, this is a for loop, and to, it will iterate, iterate on this activity new locations and check on the location hash, if he calls substring, that substring what it's what inside that intent message. And if it equals, then it will send another intent to another activity. So it will send to uh, game activity class. This is the, our new activity that will, will open. Um, it will put the content extra key. This is a constant. And substring, this is the, the same thing here. So I, I followed the, the code again. And this is the locations in, inside the activity. Uh, there are a lot of locations, but you can read here Son IM and the hash code. This is the dash code that was comparing. Uh, and a, a lot of stuff that will uh, appear on the user interface. 
Um, and this is also coded inside that activity, FRL prefix and extra key. You know this extra key is coded here, extra key, and URL prefix is this one, URL prefix. So I think I know how to create a QR code. So I did it and I created this QR code with the string, the aqua URL prefix and the hash code. And I scanned it with my phone and suddenly, congrats, <laughs> you got the, the first place. But even though I will have to create all the QR codes to scan all the places, uh, and that can, can be a little bit boring, uh, opening the app, open the camera, creating a new QR code, scan it, and doing that and repeating. So I went a, a little bit deeper. And I know I can use intents from shell, and I can, I can script it, script it to be a little bit faster. So I went on my computer and start ADB shell and this command, Android intent action view. This is the filter that is configured here. As you can see, Android intent action view is one of the filters that the, the app receives. And I use that intent filter with this content. It's the same content that I I add on the QR code and I sent it to the device and well, you got the same place. Again, I can script it to run all the hash coders, hash coders with this intent. But even though I want to do it better, so I know that when you open the app, it will um, restore the state from the, um, the last time that you used it. So he knows that you already have scanned some of the, the QR codes. So Let's go a little bit deeper and try to find a, a more um, effi efficient way to do it. So this is the code that runs when the app is uh, started, um, when you run it again. So it will go to um, this app preferences and for location, new location, it's a for loop. These new locations are coded inside the app and what it's doing, it's it goes for every location are coded in the app and check, check if that location is inside the, the preference, the, the, the save data of that app. And if, if there is no location on that uh, save data, it will assume false. Uh, but else, if there is some location, it will return true and then it will go to the, the picture and set the alpha. Um, it will put the, the image uh, with the color like you have scanned the, the place. So if you look at this, if you just comment the if, you get like a for loop that will uh, color all the images, all the images on the, the location. So I went to the Smiley code and uh, this little bit of code describes uh, what we saw. And you can see here, this is a, um, a condition, if equals zero, P3, then go to condition zero. Condition zero is here, and then you see invoke interface as next. So we know if it's zero, then it will go again to the, to the for loop. It will skip the, the set alpha that will color our image. So we know if, if you comment this line, it will just erase the, the if. So I did it, and I recompiled it. You just run an APK tool and you recompile the, the app. And then we check the original app and the modified app. We notice that there is no if here, but there's still a little bit of code that was left. But the compiler saw that code. Uh, it will do nothing to the flow of the app, but it's still there and whatever. Um, the code uh, was modified correctly, so just we're going to, to check if it, it was su successful. So I signed the APK and installed on the device and suddenly I won! <laughs> um, there was a thing, I did one because I found all the QR codes uh, before they were placed on the, the sponsor so um, I was... Um, yeah, I was cheating, so everyone else. Uh, so this is the first app, uh, it was pretty funny. But there are also other cool stuff that you can find on apps. This is um, 
I have that I had on my phone and sometimes I, I used it. Um, and one day I was bored at home and I thought about reversing the app and check what, what was inside it. Um, I cannot say the name of the app since I, I don't have the permission to, to talk about it. So I obfuscated some of the details, but there, there is the concept that, that you can see that, that it's working. Um, I can see a lot of stuff um, happening. Uh, this is a, a common mistake on there. Some people forget about some content inside the, the app. The devs um, sometimes never thought about um, the data that is going to be inside, and some dev features are, are left inside the, the app. Uh, sometimes, like uh, credentials, um, sensitive data, um, all sorts of, of, um, of information. So, here, uh, this is um, a function that will um, handle the, the key, the, the clicking of a, of a button. And you can see, check here the item 2. If you click it, it will plus plus the click count. And the, if the click count is greater than 4, then it will enable death mode. Ooh, that's juicy. So let's check it. This is the app. This is the, the button. And if you click on the button, it will show some information about that device. But if you click it more than four times, you know what happens. Debug mode was enabled. And the, the most funny part about this is that you have a new menu on the app. And inside that menu, you can enable a lot of features that were just um, just steps could, could, um, could use. So any regular user user can use uh, their features. It's pretty funny. This is a, a second example uh, that I, I found on the, the internet. This is was uh, just some random map that I, I found on the internet, and I thought about uh, checking what's inside it. Um, I cannot disclose it also because I don't have permission to do that, but it, it, it is. Um, this is a method, and this is also a basic authorization of HTTP, HTTP with a username, password, and the, the link to the WordPress admin dashboard. You should never left, uh, leave the credentials inside the, the code. Uh, it will be compiled if you, if you don't use it, even if, if, you, if, you, if you, there is no linking on the code, it will be compiled and you, it, it will still be inside the, the compiled app. So don't leave CCTV information inside the, the apps. Um, I developed um, an app uh, with some vulnerabilities. Um, it's an example that I, I did for a um, presentation on OpenSec. And it has a lot of vulnerabilities and it's like the, the top vulnerabilities that I usually found when I'm when testing Android. Um, you can check it on GitHub. This is the source code. You can compile it and run it and, and try to apply some of the, um, the concepts that uh, I teach on the, the previous slides. Um, but I, I will show you um, some vulnerabilities that uh, sometimes can happen when um, the API or the, the endpoints are not, are not secured. And this is the app, it's not pretty, but it does what I want, so this is the username and the, the password, and then you log in, and then the, it will log in on the server, and the server will reply with the name of the user, the, the amount of points, if it, it, it is a mean or not, or not. Some buttons are clickable, others don't, whatever. But if, if you put the wrong password, it, it will just say that, that the, was, was wrong. Here you can see that um, the endpoint the API service uh, has no certificate meaning, which means we, we can um, create like a fake server and send any certificate and then the app will accept that certificate. So if you are on uh, SDK um, less than 23, you just need to install uh, a CA on your device. Uh, else you need to do some modifications on the app, you need to, to add this line on the manifest, you need to, um, to add also a file on your um, assets and copy your um, CA to, to the app. 
and recompile it again, but it's not important for, for this example. Here, um, I configured my device to use the, the proxy to, to the BERT tool and with the, the port. And I, I tried to, to log in. And I can see, I'm a lazy dev, so don't, don't look at the points in the role. It's the, just the media data. But here is the username and the password. And the, the server will reply with the username, the, the role that is user F, and the, the points. And with this tool, I can modify the, the packets. So I modify this packet to the name I want, the role admin, because I want to be admin, and the points to 157. I sent it to my device, and here I'm super admin with 137 points, and I have the admin stuff enabled. So at this point, you can be admin on uh, this um, app. If you are interested on reversing uh, Android, you can follow the OWASP Mobile Top 10. Uh, you can have some examples here. Uh, it, it's um, a pretty interesting uh, um, document to, to read. Um, if, if you are there, I think you, you should really look uh, at these points to, to prevent some of the, the vulnerabilities and dangerous coding. If you are interested in uh, keeping uh, researching uh, Android security, you can use this tool to automatize some of the, um, the process. Browser is also an agent that you can install on your device uh, and it's useful for doing some stuff that it could uh, take longer. Uh, Frida is a, a dynamic analysis tool. Uh, also for Android, you have some content here that you can read on this GitHub. Uh, and of course, the mobile testing guide, that's the, um, a paper with a lot of tutorials about how to, to test some of the, the vulnerabilities on Android. Um, questions? So, uh, thank you. Uh, that was really great. Uh, I'm calling you and I need to play some games. Um, so, any questions for Jose here? Uh, please keep it short, guys. Hi, uh, I just wanted to say that we are part of the organization of the NA 2018 team. <laughs> we did hear about your story, but we never did know who did it, so congratulations. 